If you're building a homebrew transceiver, one component of the transceiver will be a, a low power driver for the PA, for example a 10 watt stage. Now to build that you may go to eBay and buy some bits and pieces. For example there's some little amplifiers you can buy that use IRF 530s and there's also kits that contain um, RD16HHF1s. This is one here which uh, I put together. One of the things I found when buying devices off eBay was that you can end up with fake devices. For example, I bought some RD16 HHF ones with a dull surface from Australia. From an eBay seller they turned out to be fake. And I bought some RD16 um, from overseas, eBay seller, and they also turned out to be fake. The uh, IRF 530s I got with the kit failed, so I bought some genuine ones and they worked alright. And I also managed to find some genuine RD06s. I don't have any RD16s that are genuine here because I've been using, I used them all in my rig. So I need to buy some more. And I thought before I spend any more money, I'm going to see if I can avoid buying fake ones again. So I knocked up a little circuit. Uh, here is a circuit diagram to test these FETs, which is basically a supply voltage through an ammeter and a, um, a, a pot to adjust the voltage on the gate and uh, the idea is to vary the gate voltage and measure the drain current. So here is a setup on a bit of a circuit board with pads on it. This uh, little voltmeter is the bias voltage which is across the pot moving arm and over here we have the ammeter which is in series with the power supply. We have another meter here which I used to measure the actual voltage at the gate terminal. For example I've got a, uh, a FET, an IRF 530 in here at the moment so as I vary the the bias voltage, which I call the bias voltage, you see the current go up, it'll rise, and then uh, what I did was plot the voltage against the drain current. So here are my readings uh, for the four different devices, the genuine one, the two fakes, and the RD06. Now one of the things uh, that's different between the IRF530 and the RD16s is the pinout. You'll notice that the pinout uh, on both devices, the gate is on that side. That's uh, that's true on both devices, but the drain on the IRF 530s in the center pin, whereas on the RD is 16 and the 06, the source is the center pin. So you have to be careful of that. So after I did my measurements, I discovered that the uh, well, first thing I did was compare the results with the graphs from the data sheets. And the important graph is the gate voltage versus the drain current. Here it is for the 16. You'll see it's uh, virtually no current until you get to around about 3 point, uh, maybe 4.6 volts. And then you get quite a lot of drain current. Similarly with the IRF 530. Um, but the curve is different. So it's possible to determine uh, whether you have an IRF 530 or a, a genuine RD16, apart from the fact the pins are the, are the other way around. And by the way, uh, most of these FETs have a protective diode inside them with the anode on the source and the drain and the cathode on the drain. So if you put a multimeter uh, set to the uh, diode test, you should read around 0.6 of a volt with the positive terminal of the meter on uh, the source and the negative terminal on the drain. That's a handy little test as well. Most of the MOSFETs have that protective diode. So having uh, plotted the curves, I discovered that the, the dull finished RD16 actually has the pin out the same as an IRF530 and the results of the measurements indicate that it's very close to an IRF530. So this particular supplier had given me IRF530s which had been over stamped or stamped with RD16. Uh, H, HF1s on it. The second uh, fake RD16 with a shiny surface turned out to be a surprise. It actually turned out to be a transistor. I found there was a significant current into the terminal that's meant to be the gate and when I put the meter across the terminal across the gate to ground I found it couldn't go higher than around 0.6 of a volt which indicated to me that that's a base emitter junction and I found that with the 1 milliamp into that terminal, I found 100 milliamps in the what would turned out to be the collector, of course. So it was a power transistor with a beta of 100 and had been stamped um, RD16. 
the genuine uh, RD06 it followed the curve pretty closely so I was quite happy with that one here is a, uh, a closer view of the little uh, socket that I put on my little jig which is a uh, six pins and the way it's worked out is that I have provision for both the IRF 530 and the RD 16 taking note that the pins are different so we have gate gate here we have source drain and here we have drain source that made it convenient to test both types of uh, fence by just simply pulling them out of the, um, the socket and putting them in the appropriate holes here is a view of the shiny RD16 HHF1 give you a bit of a look at that here is a view of the uh, dull version RD16 HHF1 it's not very clear this is the uh, genuine Mitsubishi RD06 HHF1 and you need to be careful handling the leads I've grounded my hand so the, uh, I avoid static this is the uh, genuine IF, IRF 530 from a large supplier in Australia weren't very expensive about 60 cents each but the mail costs do uh, took the price of uh, 10 up to around $20 here are the, my stack of IRF 530s some very large power FETs for audio amps and a bin full of unknown for various FETs actually which uh, all need to be tested uh, here's the bag of fake ones, there's 10 in there a few other bits and pieces so if you build a little test circuit like I've got it might help you to identify whether you've got real FETs or fake ones